So in the last video, I mentioned how one of our emphases is on structure function relationships and how changes in the structure can change function. And we'll take a look at hemoglobin as an example and the sickle cell variant of hemoglobin. So hemoglobin has uh, four polypeptide subunits, so it has quaternary structure. So it has two chains of alpha hemoglobin plus two chains of beta hemoglobin. So normal hemoglobin has these tetrapeptide structures um, along with a heme group that binds oxygen um, and our red blood cells are filled with uh, these tetramers. But in sickle cell disease, what happens under certain conditions is that the hemoglobin tetramers stack and form fibers. And these fibers are just these hemoglobin molecules in their tetrameric form, and these tetramers um, are just stacked together to form each of these little globules is a tetramer, and um, these tetramers then associate with each other to form these fibers that cause deformation of the red blood cell. The red blood cell turns into a sickle shape, uh, which gets clogged to add to passes through capillaries, um, it loses oxygen carrying capacity, and therefore we have anemia uh, and lots of red blood cell damage. If we take a detailed look at the structure of hemoglobin, uh, sickle cell hemoglobin, what we see is that the sickle cell hemoglobin is caused by a single amino acid change in the beta globin chain. So where normal hemoglobin has glutamic acid as the sixth amino acid in the beta globin chain, in the sickle cell mutation, the glutamic acid is replaced with a valine. So what's the big deal? Glutamic acid is negatively charged. and therefore very hydrophilic. Valine is a very hydrophobic amino acid. So look at where glutamic acid is in normal hemoglobin. It's way out here on the surface of the protein where it can interact with water molecules. Now that's not a good place for valine. Valine does not want to be out on the surface of the molecule. It does not like to interact with water molecules. So then what happens? The presence of valine on the surface then causes an additional interaction between sickle cell um, tetramers. So the valines interact with each other because you know, we have exposed hydrophobic surfaces that we have an additional hydrophobic interaction that causes dimerization you know, of, of two different tetramers getting together. And when they get together, they can form these stacks, and eventually you get fiber formation. So let's answer this question. What levels of protein structure are affected by the sickle cell hemoglobin? mutation. Well, we know since there is a change in the amino acid sequence, the primary structure is affected. And if we look in detail, it looks like there are some changes in the secondary structure. And again, if we look closely at the uh, yellow or the beta globin, oh, uh, these rods equal alpha helices. So uh, it, it looks to me like there's a, a change in, in, in the alpha helices, therefore there's a change in the secondary structure. Um, 
it looks like there are subtle changes in the tertiary structure. And since these tetramers uh, associate and uh, to form these fibers in sickle cell, that is also a change in the quaternary structure. So all four levels of structure are affected by sickle cell disease.